everyone. I'm Pak Milani reporting live on CW1. Today we're going to be interviewing the Mayor of Nova Sinitium and the Head Engineer of the Public Space Department. Today I've invited Mayor Prera and the Head Engineer British to give us a tour of Nova Sinitium itself. Good evening, Pak. Good evening, Pocky. Okay. Good evening, Pocky. Before we jump right into public spaces, I'd like to describe the city from all perspectives, if you don't mind. Nova Sinitia, located in past day St. Louis and established in 2200, was a, has an estimated population of 1 million initiates. The city is thriving and is well known for its variety of public spaces. This region is also an ideal location, with the crystal clear waters of the Mississippi River enhancing the overall vibe. In addition, our climate ranges from an average high of 89.8 degrees Fahrenheit to an average low of 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that all seems quite interesting. Although, where does your economy come from? Well, Pocky, our economy mainly strives from the tourism industry. As people from all around the world come to view the Grand Gateway Arch located on the other side of Nova Sinitium, the Grand Mississippi River, and our variety of futuristic public spaces. I see you have brought a model of how a section of your city looks like. Yes, we have a 3D model with a scale of 1 inch equals 25 feet that exactly depicts a part of our city. Each zone is located in a perfect way that allows the city to function efficiently. Sounds good. What services does your city have to offer? Well, for starters, we have fire, police, and health. In addition, we value citizen happiness. That is why we have walking trails and bike paths located around the city in order to promote good health, outdoor activity, and exercise. As for educational services, EduTabs are multi-purpose tablets which provide one-on-one -on -one teaching capabilities and efficient learning on a digital platform. Another education innovation is the DigiDesk, which is a regular desk with integrated screens and technology. As for healthcare, all citizens are equipped with a health chip implant that is located near uh, near the bottom of your ear, which calculates your average calorie intake, records your blood pressure, your pulse, the distance you walk in a day, and notifies you if it detects a disease or virus, internal or external. Another, another healthcare innovation are holospecs, which are smart glasses which provide an interactive base with your health chip implant. As for energy, we utilize wind, solar, tidal, and biomass energy. For example, as you can see on the model, we have many solar panels located on a variety of buildings. In addition, we have water turbines along with the windows, which are also the two moving parts of our city. What about transportation? Well, we have a system called the Hyperdrive, which is a maglev bullet train running on clean energy that circles overhead around various parts of the city. In addition, we have sky ponds, which are not just used for transportation, but as a public, but as a tourist attraction too. Also, roads are considered a transportation of public space too. As all our cars are electric, we use a magnetic propulsion system that allows for self-driving cars. The way this works is by the entire road being a long strip of magnet and a repelling magnet attached to the bottom of each electric car. We also optimize the idea of public spaces itself by using something we like to call rivers. Rivers? Like the Mississippi River? No, no, not rivers. Rivas. What does rivas stand for? Let me guess. The R stands for recycling. Why, yes it does, Poppy. Nice guess. Past day St. Louis had a higher proportion of abandoned buildings and vacant lots than Detroit, one of the major cities of the time. That is, uh, then we used, um, from the uh, abandoned buildings, we used the construction materials that made up the abandoned buildings in order to reconstruct some of the components of rivas, such as the G-spheres and other buildings you can view on the model. Yeah, as you can see on the model, various par parts of our city are still under reconstruction. In this case, we're demolishing old abandoned buildings and recreating them into new recreational areas for our city. I've heard that I in Riva stands for interconnectivity. I can see that the G-spheres are connected with carbon fiber passageways, which provide easy access to get from one sphere to another. What does the V stand for? Well, since you've asked, the V stands for vertical. In order to use space efficiently, we decided to build up so that we could fit more and less space. That is why there are public spaces on top of the buildings. They are also known as rooftop public spaces. And the A stands for accessibility. All citizens have accessibility to public spaces since they are placed around the city. The carbon fiber passageways on the rooftop parks provide accessibility to those who occupy the building as well as other initiates in another neighboring building. 
Lastly, the S stands for sustainability. Due to the simple yet effective system, Ribos is able to sustain the major need for an accessible yet public space where initiatives can have fun as well as socialize. Interaction between the citizens promotes healthy and happy living. Does this system have any trade-offs? Yes, the cost of the maintenance of the rooftop park, excavating the abandoned buildings, was very expensive. However, due to its accessibility and convenience for the citizens, as well as other, as well as the disabled, initiates love the rooftop, rooftop parks, as the mood and vibe you get while you're relaxing and working there is awesome. In Ribos, we have the reuse of construction materials and spaces, so that was a major trade-off. But in the end, everything balanced out. Truly amazing. Are there any other innovations you use to make your public spaces futuristic? Well, now that you ask, another innovation made to public spaces are green pods. A green pod is a privatized urban pod which are placed around many spots in the park which provide citizens a getaway from the rough city life. The green pod has top-of-the-line technology integrated into its system, and we only charge $2 per hour for additions to use, and that's extremely cheap. This also acts as a small revenue stream. Furthermore, the G-spheres, as we mentioned before, are spherical rooftop parks divided into three sections with each level being a different public space on its own. Wow, that's pretty cheap. I might even use one later today. Anyway, I must ask you why Nova Scotian has such an amazing vibe. I mean, everybody's so kind and happy. I once heard that Nova Scotian, or St. Louis as it once was, was ranked seventh most unhappiest place in USA and twelfth most dangerous city in 2016. What? It's true. The many unused and unappealing buildings were a sore to the eye, and it saddened the overall mood of the city. That's why we turned the abandoned buildings and created them into public spaces so people can meet and socialize. This also creates a good vibe and a, a, a sense of unity. How did you come up with such a futuristic way of public spaces? Well, we used the engineering design process. First, we had to recognize the problems, and as we mentioned before, St. Louis was known for its crime rates and dangers. Then we had to learn specifications. After break, we had to set goals and learn how we would accomplish them. After brainstorming a solution, we realized Rivas was a multi-step solution would be necessary and therefore came up with Rivas. However, this whole, pro uh, this whole city wouldn't have been accomplished without the help of our engineers. Civil engineers helped create the stable and steady structures for the G-spheres and carbon fiber passageways, and environmental engineers overlooked the treatment process of the excavation. All right, seven minutes. Well, that's it for today's segment, folks, and thank you for tuning in. Hi guys, great job. Thank you. Um, so my first question I have for you guys is, um, how do your city's public spaces contribute to your citizens' quality of life? Well, um, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, we have many parks located around the city, and we have um, uh, rooftop public spaces so they're accessible. We decided not to only include science behind this presentation, but to consider the human factor as well. We needed to we needed to let citizens feel happy and to feel to like have a good vibe or the feeling you get in a park. Like when we're here in Future City, we have we want to have fun. We don't just want to like talk. So, like interaction between citizens promote promoted healthy and happy living, and that's why um, Nova Scotia, as Poppy said, is so happy and everyone's kind and enthusiastic. Thank you. Um, the second question, which of the area of roadway or brownfield, greyfield was more challenging to convert into public space and why? Well, um, the brownfields were, uh, uh, brownfields and greyfields were a bit more harder to convert since we didn't uh, focus on like converting the roads since we had so many um, public spaces. So, as we mentioned earlier, Nova Initium had many abandoned lots, abandoned lots and abandoned buildings. So we had to refurbish them into public meeting spaces where initiatives could socialize and uh, organizations could host uh, programs. And also the, um, the material left from the buildings, we also used that for the construction of the G-spheres with our buildings. Yeah, so we found an innovative way to um, use um, the abandoned building materials to impl impl implement them into other buildings on model. That also shows a part of our rivas, which means like we recycle old uh, materials and use them for new purposes. Okay, thank you. Um, for each one of you, why did you decide to enroll in the Future City competition in the first place? 
So, um, in Fuji City, there's like many parts that like we get to learn about a lot of stuff, like um, engineering design process, how to like think critically, and how to think like how buildings will be in the future. And also, we um, learned I learned teamwork, which was really important because you get to know how to work with other people, even though you don't know them. And you also learn how to like implement like other like new ideas into making the buildings. For me personally, I did the Future City program last year, so. Um, I didn't learn uh, as much, but the one thing that mainly stood out was teamwork. Because last year our ideas conflicted with each other and like we didn't agree on uh, some of the things. This year we um, put aside our differences and we compromised in order to create the Riva system which all of us contributed to. Um, I was responsible for the essay, he was responsible for the SimCity, and she was responsible for the most of the artistic part of the, of the model because I'm not a and I learned not just teamwork, but other skills that are needed later on in life. For example, like budgeting skills, we needed to stay under the budget of $100 of our city. And basically teamwork and being creative, like that's another thing. We need to have something innovative as well as artistic when we're creating the model. Um, to add to that, um, when, we, when we got the topic public spaces, it was pretty hard because like you can't really build upon parts. We had to find futuristic and innovate, innovative solutions to uh, build upon the uh, uh, topic of public spaces itself. And we learned a public space isn't just a park, but um, brown fields, vacant lots, um, even a road can be a public space. Any place where people can gather and have fun. Would you live in the city? Definitely. Yes. Definitely. What's the, the best feature that makes you want to live in the city? So, in my point of view, the best um, the best thing is the G spheres, honestly, because they're on top of build they're on top of every single building, and like it's just like let's say you're bored of your work in, in your, like an office, and then you can just go up and like relax, and it's like it provides like a good vibe to the city, and it also like allows people to interact with each other. Um, I live in this building specifically because that's my favorite one because it looks really awesome. So yeah, I choose to live in this area and uh, these are like hotels so I mean, I, I, I love the city so I live anywhere. I like the city because like it's practically perfect. Like, Because <laughs> like the energy sources, they're good, they're green. Uh, then we have like a lot of parks, creates a good vibe, a sense of community, all that kind of stuff. It's, it makes a city that I like. How would the city be catered towards people that are disabled? Well, as we mentioned before, every we have made accommodations for people in the G spheres. We have braille writing for the deaf on signs so they can understand everything. Um, we have specially hired workers who know sign language and all, um, the, all the things necessary in order for uh, the disabled, uh, for people who are disabled to experience the same um, way normal people do. For example, in the carbon fiber passageways, we have moving uh, pathways so people who are in a wheelchair don't have to um, stress themselves and they can just go um, through the carbon fiber passageways. In addition to that, we have public spaces placed like basically everywhere in our city. So even if you're disabled, like you don't have to like go that far to go to a public space. Like you go outside your house and it's like right there. And uh, in order to add to that, uh, the government takes special care for the disabled. So special rides are um, created for them to like you know go drop off to the park, just enjoy the nice view and walk. And normal aspects too. Like instead of having stairs, we have ramps. And basically, we just make it like disabled are just as good as people. The small things are really good. Thank you. Thank you.